off the edge of the roof. Mm -hmm. And then the little kid comes and is very creepy. Instead of like using the knife on him, he starts like biting, biting his, his hand. fingers. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, when the strangers communicate, they have that weird kind of clicking. It almost sounds like the predator. Mm -hmm. That. But yeah, the kid starts biting his hand, and then like the chimney or something is coming up, and he jumps onto that and grabs that. But he's trying to escape them. Comes down the uh, the fire escape at, at one point. And is out in the alley and the strangers are chasing him. And then Bumstead and Emma pick him up and save him. Is there a reason why they weren't able to... Because they obviously they see the strangers. But mm -hmm. they're not able to put... They weren't able to put them to sleep. Like, uh, Were they too far away? Maybe they're just too far away. Okay. I mean, Cause, yeah. Because watching it, it seems like one of them tries to do it. But uh, they just speed off. And yeah. I was like, huh, okay. Yeah, I think they were just too far. Because you see them when, they, when that trick works, they're pretty much in, their, in the, the person's face when they do that. Yeah. And it's kind of cool when he has that first confrontation, when Murdoch has that first confrontation with the strangers up on the billboard, you know, Mr. Hands or as, you know, says sleep, and then it, he does it, nothing happens. Dude, those, all them, those dudes get wrecked when the, when the wood gives out. And one of them falls and just hangs himself. And <laughs> he doesn't die though, because that's that's Bruce Spence. That's that's uh, Mr. Wall. Mm -hmm. He doesn't die because he he comes back later in the film. You see him. Uh, he's with Mr. Hand in most of those other scenes. But yeah, I thought I thought that was weird. Like he's hanging there. But the and, way it's yeah, the way it's shot and executed, yeah. it just looks very visceral. Like all the <laughs> like how everything. Well, Mr. Hand is is the first one that falls through the hole, mm -hmm. like when the wood gives away. But then he comes up on the other side a little bit later. Behind him, right? yeah, yeah, comes up behind him. And yeah, and then when when he's escaping on the fire escape, the buildings are closing in, and that one that one guy gets stuck. I think that's even the guy that's like, oh, poor Mr. Whatever. <laughs> I think it's that guy. Mm -hmm. His coat gets stuck on the fire escape, and he gets smashed in between the buildings. Yeah, they got some They got some pretty pretty good kills. But there's... Uh, we, didn't, we didn't talk about the scene where, where Bumstead, I think, kind of believes Murdoch, mm -hmm. you know, and takes him, and they find, they find Schreiber. And uh, make him, you know, take us to the edge of the city, like, show us what's going on. And that's when they have the canal, they're in the canal, and Schreiber kind of lays out what he thinks is going on and what the strangers are up to. And then they get to the part that's the edge of the city, and they come through the door, and the shell beach is just the wall. It's like a, a, a mural on the wall. Yeah, it's like a billboard, but uh, plastered on a brick, mm -hmm. like a brick wall. And him and Bumstead, like, pretty much tear it open and they chip away at it. And then the the, the big reveal happens where they're, it's space Yeah, on the other side. It's just space, which is really cool. It is. And the space looks awesome. And you can see, like, the blue nebula. Which you see in the very beginning because it's up in the sky. Mm -hmm. um, you see that, and then and then the strangers show up, and there's a confrontation. And Bumstead shoots a couple of them. And I think Mr. Wall is the one that fights them, and then they end up Flying falling out. falling through the hole in the wall and out in the space. Yeah, it's Mr. Wall. I wonder if that's why he's na named that. <laughs> Mr. Hand. There's Mr. Wall. The kid's name is Mr. Sleep. Oh, it is? They refer to the kid as Mr. Sleep at one, at one point. Because when they're talking about what to do about Murdoch when they're in the lair, the kid, like, whispers something to someone else. They're like, oh, yes, Mr. Sleep thinks we should do this. <laughs> the kid's super creepy. The makeup is good. Yeah. I guess they all have that pale kind of hollow eye look because they're supposed to be dead bodies. Mm-hmm. But I think the kid is, is good. He's got, he's got his little fedora and his little coat. Yeah, when he's following, it's uh, he's following Murdoch down the hall, and he does that Freddy Krueger thing. Yeah, he drags the knife across the the wall. It's pretty bad. But in the end, Murdoch gets injected with the memories to help defeat the strangers. He basically destroys the the entire lair. I'm assuming that all the strangers are killed. 
So what would have happened if Murdoch was injected with what they were trying to inject them with? He would have just become one with them? I think so, because they had the hive mind. I think that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to neutralize him by making him one of them. So they all think alike? Yeah. Okay. But he has he has the battle with Mr. Book, defeats Mr. Book, and then is able to, according to Schreiber, who says you can do whatever you want, you know, he's able to make the city what he wants. He's able to create the beach, to create the ocean, to bring sunlight to the city. Which is always an endless night. And we skip the part where he goes to see his uncle. Oh, yeah, that's who's right. Who's supposed to be his uncle. Who has, you know, pictures of him and his father and him as a kid. and uh, Old, like, eight, what is it, like, eight millimeter. Mm-hmm. Um footage and stuff and yeah the slides and then in one of those one of those pictures john sees you know his younger self and you can see the the scar on his arm from where the fire was Mm -hmm. you know the fire that killed his parents destroyed his childhood home had burned him but when john lifts up his his sleeve he has nothing he doesn't have the scar which you know is what he's been trying to figure out all along like none of this is real None of these memories are real. You know, he knows that it's all bullshit, and he knows what these guys are up to. From the clues that he's picked up, from the from what he heard from Olinsky, that these these beings are trying to, you know, create, are manipulating our memories, are implanting false memories, so that we think that we have had this life when we really haven't. But when he's when he's there with his uncle, he's you know looking at the clock and he's like, you know, what time is it? And he's like, oh yeah, it's this clock, and it never it never loses time. It's always super reliable. And he says, is it a.m. or p.m.? You know, where did the day go? And that's you know when he asks Bumstead when he's in the interrogation room too. You know, when do you remember like daytime? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, do you remember yesterday? You have all these memories of your life, but do you remember yesterday? When was the last time you, you know, did something during the day? It's always nighttime. And I think that that's really cool, too. Do you think this is Proyas's, like, his best? Oh, by far. Yeah? By far. I I don't think he's done a lot of movies, but anything post-Dark City has been awful. But the only two or three movies I know he's done post-Dark City have been... Uh, I Robot, which I don't like. Not at all. Not really. Uh, that's his. That's his commercial hit. Yeah, his big, it was a big hit. Yeah, it made a ton of money, but I don't really like it. But I mean, it's it's a it's big summer blockbuster. It doesn't have any of the the ideas or the concepts or anything that make this movie so unique. Obviously, the oh, I do have a good crow story, but obviously, the crow was his big breakthrough and is a pretty visually, yeah, uh, it's great, great film. Knowing with Nick Cage, have you ever seen that where he's like the psychic? Bad, it's a bad movie, right? Yeah, oh, and God's of Egypt, which we which we touched on, uh, which I haven't seen, but apparently is super bad, and I have no desire to see it. But yeah, like by far, this is his best film, okay. Um, so my, my thing with the crow, this came up in my, my notes. I hope I have it. Yes. He does the crow is his first film. And then he follows it up with this. Supposedly, uh, he and Brandon Lee, while they had downtime on the crow, were discussing dark city. And, uh, the speculation is that if Lee hadn't have died, he might've been offered the John Murdoch role in, in this do you think uh, that's true? I don't know. That's a good story. Hmm. I just like I said, this this is all a lot of speculation that did come up on the research, but I don't know if any of that is verified. I just know that during the downtime on the crow, he kind of discussed it with with Brandon Lee. Just maybe not even saying, "Hey, I want you for this movie," but just, "Oh, I'm thinking about doing this movie, and this is kind of like what the concept of it is, and, mm-hmm. and all that." But because of that, it's kind of wondering if Brandon Lee would have been the John Murdoch character had he uh, not died. So you want to hear what some of the critics said? Yeah, lay it on me, man. Okay, we already know our boy Ebert, what he thought of it. Some of the positive reviews. Uh, James 
Bira Dinelli, I hope I'm saying that right, who wrote for Real Views, was a huge fan of it. Said, visually, the film isn't just impressive, it's a tour de force. He adds that Dark City opens by immersing the audience in the midst of a fractured, nightmarish narrative in a city that appears to be New York in the first half of the century, but using a style that is part science fiction, part noir thriller, and part gothic horror. Proyas has embellished it to create a surreal place unlike no other. He also wrote, No movie can ever have too much atmosphere, and Dark City exudes it from every frame of celluloid. Proyce's world isn't just a playground for his characters to romp in, it's an ominous place where viewers can get lost. We don't just coolly observe the bizarre, ever-changing skyline, we plunge into the city's benighted depths, following the protagonist as he explores the secrets of this grim place where the sun never shines. Dark City has as stunning a visual texture as that as any movie I've ever seen. So the San Francisco Examiner... Thought the story doesn't amount to much, which, as you said earlier, like, what are these people watching? (laughs) Doesn't amount to much, and the plot was overly complicated, which... No. No way. It's not that hard to follow. It's really not. Are people dumb? Are they not paying attention during the movie? It's, uh... I mean, even going back to what Alex said, that's kind of the point, is you need to... Like, you have to be invested. Yeah, you're following clues. Like, you don't watch, start a Who Done It film, and then you're like, well, this is dumb because I can't even figure out who done it. Like, that's not how it works. Yeah. You know, the, how the genre works. It's the same thing. So they think the plot is overly complicated. Uh, however, they did mention that what counts is the show and that the film was a strange world created by a filmmaker who clearly knew science fiction and fantasy past present and wants to share his love for it. Okay. At least they can find something. And I still don't know what they're talking about. The plot being overly complicated. It's not. And they watched the theatrical version, which gives you the entire plot up front. Los Angeles times wrote that Proyas was simultaneously trying to create a pure thriller and sci-fi nightmare along with tongue in cheek critique of artifice and it didn't quite work out so well. <laughs> he was trying to create like a tongue-in-cheek critique of artifice, like. Okay. Okay, guy. Isn't <laughs> isn't the point of the movie that they're manipulating the city to try to like fuck with these people, and it's a big experiment? Do you think the police was trying to like make this a satire about something? Newsweek had some positive stuff. They said. uh... Royce floods the screen with cinematic and literary references ranging from Murnau, who did Nosferatu, and Lang, who did Metropolis, to Kafka and Orwell, uh, two, two writers, obviously Orwell does 1984, mm-hmm. and creates an utter, an, a unique yet utterly convincing world. USA Today wrote that the film was a fascinating, visionary filmmaking that may have been the most unique-looking film they'd seen in ages, but it defies logic and makes unexpected leaps in its storytelling. Sci-fi. It's (laughs) sci-fi. Right. You can't really do that with buildings. You can't really create buildings out of nothing. (laughs) This is, this is my answer for a lot of stuff. Now there was one time I was at the theater and two of my coworkers, uh, my friend Dave and my friend Daniela were, were there and they were talking and they were, they were looking at a poster and Daniela was like, you know, someone that can't do that, you know, the, I guess the pose on the poster or whatever. She was like, someone someone can't do that. That's not possible. And Dave just turned to her and said, that's why it's called a fucking movie. <laughs> and I think that's my answer now for a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's called a fucking movie. It doesn't have to be real life down to the logic in physics. Yeah. It's, it's, people are so strange. Especially when it's in a fantasy or sci-fi. Like, Yeah, that's when you can explore the most and do crazy shit. These are the type of people who, who examine kills and they're like, that's not what real lungs look like. (laughs) Okay, guys. Well, if a lot of people don't know this, do you know what happens when you die? Your body, like, 
gets rid of everything. You piss and shit yourself. Mm -hmm. How many times when you watch a movie does that happen to someone when they get killed? No, because it's not cinematic. Right. It's called suspension of disbelief, people. <laughs> it's like filmmaking 101, all right? Or